Hey, welcome back. We're going to uh, use configurations and we're going to use a design table to create multiple parts or multiple. If you have parts that are in the same family, uh, you may not want to remodel each of them. So what you can do is you can control this by using this configuration manager and, and a design table. So what we've got here is nothing more than a simple T-bolt with different lengths and different diameters on the, the threads themselves. So if we're looking at this, uh, we've got a drawing that's got some different sizes in here. You can tell that we got different part numbers. We got 501 through 505, which is a half inch T bolt, but they're different lengths. And we got 601 through 605, which is a 5 eighths bolt, which has different lengths and different size chamfers on it. Uh, we look down here, the ones, the dimensions that are going to change are going to be the ones that actually have the letters on them. So we've got C, D, B, and A, and then we have um, the ones that are going to continue to be throughout this family of parts and they're always going to be consistent so you don't have to worry about changing those. You can go back and change the tip. The, you can go back and edit the table and make sure that you can change these if something ever happens where where you need to start adjusting say the thickness of the head or the diameter of the head or, or the width of it. So that's always something that you can come back in and edit. So let's go ahead and get started with a, uh, a new part. Uh, we're going to start with part number 501 and we're going to go ahead and start adding some configurations. So make sure that your your part file is set up as uh, inch pounds and seconds. And I'll look down here to the bottom right hand corner and we are. Um, I want to come up to our material first and foremost. I want to right click and I want to edit the material. Um, I want to be a 4340 steel just annealed and close it. So we now apply that. And now I want to start adding some configurations. So I come up here to our configuration manager. Uh, notice this very first one shows it as default, but I really want it to say that it is uh, going to be 501. So I select the writing, pause for just a moment, select the writing again, and now I can change it by just typing in the number. So now I have one, one configuration of 501, which is the default. But now what I want to do is I come, want to come up here to the part. I want to use my right click command and I want to add a configuration. This part is going to be 502. I could put a description in here of what this thing is, but I really don't, I'm not too concerned about it for this. But if you want to get real specific with it, you can do that. And if you want to add different configurations in your bill of materials, you can select this as well. So we'll go ahead and accept it. And it says something about the material is going to be different uh, appearance. I'm not too concerned about the appearance. So I'll just select OK and we keep moving. Now I want to come up and I want to start adding more of these. I'll right click again. Add a configuration. This one's going to be 503. Um, right click in, add a configuration 504. Add a configuration again 505. Now, this is where you know we're going to add another configuration, but the diameter is going to change. So we add a configuration that's going to be 601. Not real concerned with it. Add a configuration 602. Keep going, 603, 604, and 605. So we got 10 different parts out here, or 10 different configurations, but the same part. Now notice this one has a color to it, and this would be the configuration that we're working in. But I really want to start with 501, so I want to come up to this icon. I want to double click on the icon. It's now got color and everything else is ghosted out. So we're working in configuration 501. So now when we move up to our feature manager tree or design tree, I select it and I verify that we are in 501 by this saying 501 is a default and that's a display state and everything else. So I want to create a revolve ball space and I want it to be on the front plane. So I hover over the front plane, turns orange, left mouse click and it selects it. Start with a regular line. I'm going to start on the point of origin. One click. Two, three, over. And I want one more line. I'm going to part pick right here. And this is going to be my axis. So I want to make it for construction. So now I want to add a relation because I know that this line and this line may not be collinear. So let's go ahead and add a relation. Um, all configurations. So I pick here and I pick here and I go ahead and I make a collinear and I accept it. Now we're ready to start doing the or 
creating the dimensions that are going to be used throughout all the configurations. So we know it's always going to be 45 degrees. We know that this is always going to be 60 thou in length, and this is going to be 30 thou and 391 and 1438 in diameter. So let's come back up here. I'm going to use my escape command a couple times. Smart dimension. I'm going to pick this line, this line, and it's going to be 45. So we said that this line, this little vertical line was 0.03 deep and it was going to be 0.06 in width. All right. So this one was also 0.391. And now this is where the diameter is going to come into play. So I come pick this line, this line, pull it out. Now notice if I'm on this side of my axis, it's uh, just a linear dimension between this line and this axis. But if I pull it on the other side, it's going to double it for me. Then I'm going to place it down and I want to say 1.438. Now, I'm going to use my escape command once. If you look at my mouse pointer, see how it's got the double dimension in it? If I hit the escape key one time, it loses that. And now I want to start with this little C dimension out here. So I'll pick it, pull it out. I want to make sure that I have it in the right orientations. So I can pull it out as a parallel dimension to this uh, horizontal dimension, but I want it to be this vertical dimension like it's called out on our drawing. And this is going to be, I want to change my, my label on here. So I want it to be C. Um, I want the size to be 0.06. And this is where it becomes important. So I want to come over here to this chevron and I want to say, um, let's specify configurations just to show you. So we want 501, 502, 503, 504, and 505. And then it's select OK. So that's going to be that dimension through all of those. All right. So we accept that. Now, the next thing we want is let's let's do B and A and then we'll come back and do our, our diameter dimension last. Now let's work our way down. So pick here and here. So this is just a standard linear dimension. Pull it on the other side. It's going to be doubled. Um, this dimension was D view label. It was also 0.5 and let's just say this configuration for just a moment and accept it. So we've got this one where we selected the configurations that we wanted. We've got this one where it's only one and now we're still in double dimensioning. So I want to hit my escape key one time. So I want a linear dimension now. So I want to pick from here to this little vertical line here. Place it down. I think that view label was B. It is B and it's going to be one and a half. So we come up here and we change our view label to B. We change our size to 1.5. Let's go with this configuration and accept it. And now what we need is our overall length of this. So I'm going to put, pick it, place it down. This is going to be view label A. Uh, this configuration and it was going to be 3. Accept it. Now normally I would think that I'm fully defined but I'm underdefined. If you notice one thing out here, this line right here is not vertical. So when I drew it I really didn't get that one vertical. So I picked this line and I forced it into the vertical constraint and now we're fully defined and we're ready to revolve this. So if you'd selected revolve all space to begin with uh, as soon as you exit your sketch, it's automatically going to revolve around that particular axis. So let's go ahead and accept it. All right. So now we've got one more feature on here that we've got to create, and that's going to be this cut on this back side. Uh, a little bit different than what normally. So we come up and select extrude cut. I want to pick this back face here, rotates around for me. I'm going to use my center rectangle. It up, place it down. We know that it is one inch wide. I'm going to give it an arbitrary dimension out here, just say two point, yeah, just two. And now we exit our sketch. 
and it's going to show us that we're trying to cut this here I want to make sure that we go through everything and I also want to flip the side to cut because if I don't flip the side to cut it's going to cut everything out of the center and it's going to end up with two ears here so select flip side to cut and accept it and control 7 so that is configuration 501 so let's go ahead and save this part and call mine jump all right now is when we want to add our design table so let's come up here to our insert tab insert tables uh, design table I want to leave the auto create button turned on I want to allow the model to create updates updates inside of the table and I'm going to leave all of these uh, as checked so let's go ahead and accept that it's going to take just a moment my Excel table is going to pop up on the other screen I'm going to drag it over so I have uh, part number 501 not too concerned about the color notice that I've got C D B and A out here notice remember when we uh, selected the configurations how they all changed in this one but we left everything else alone so we want to change all of these and without having to go back in here and select them all right so let's go ahead and minimize this let's save our model again so that's going to save our table all right so now as I come up here to my configurations notice I've got 501 if I select 502 I think it's going to disappear it does 503 504 505 601 all this stuff is is not really there so let's come up here and we want to edit our table So let's go ahead and select all of these. So I'm going to hold it down, click on one, hold my shift key down, and select OK. And now my table popped up. It popped up on the other window. And notice it's got these states out here. It says suppressed. Um, so 502, the cut extrude is suppressed the revolve is suppressed um, sketch 2 is suppressed so what I can do is I can select a U here and I can fill these in and it's going to be unsuppressed I'm going to do a U here and it's going to unsuppress you and unsuppressed okay so I'm going to minimize this so let's save our model again and there it came so 501 looks good but what happens when we get down here to the 6 turns into a pencil point out here so we got something that's really not right in here so let's go back to our design table so I'm going to come up here right click edit the table I popped up on the other screen give me just a moment so I'll place it here now notice these are the only dimensions that are still in good shape now the 601s when I look at the the table for dimension C it's 0.09 um, so I'm going to come up here, 0 0.09. Now I can grab this little little green rectangle right here, green square. I can drag it down and it it fills in the rest of them with the same number. So we got 0 0.09. Now D, it was a half inch all the way to 505. So we're going to select it. And now remember 601s that's when we ended up with the 5 8 diameter shaft right here so let's go ahead and we're going to select it so 601 we're going to say it's 0.625 I can then grab that little window right there and drag it down 
and they're 0 0.625. Now the length on these, I think they gain by half of an inch in each time. So B was 1, 5, 2, 2, 5, 3, and 3, 5. So we'll come back here to, so we're going to say 2. 2.5, uh, 3, 3.5, and now we're ready to start over again. We can copy paste it, but this is a small table, so we're just going to roll with it. And we say 3 and 3.5. Now A was also the same thing. I think it just grew by half of an inch. A started out as 3, 3.5, three so let's go back to our sheet and so 3.5, 4, 4.5, and 5. So a good copy and paste. Let's do that. So I come up here, hold my shift key down, control C for copy, move down to the next window, control V, Victor, for paste, and it pastes them all out here. Hit the escape key one time. I'm going to minimize this. And let's save this. And see if everything updates so now our spreadsheet should be up to date so I start selecting these different ones and turn them on turn them off so our spreadsheet is controlling what's going on with our model and if we wanted to we can get inside of this notice it dropped down to a half inch and the sixes are five eighths of an inch so the shaft is a lot larger so that's how we actually work with our, our spreadsheet. You want to make sure that you save this thing each time when, you, when you've made changes. So that's how you can go through and make your changes. So our default is going to be 501. So let's leave it there. Hit your F button for fit. We've got it saved in the isometric view or control 7. So go ahead and save that. We want you to turn that in in your learning management system. Uh, the next video is going to show you how to create your drawing and your drawing table. So hit your save. And we'll see you on the next time. Thank you.